kind of shared course for members groups, this idea that kind of like 12 steps, you know, everyone goes around, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I'm an alcoholic, kind of an admission kind of thing, that I've said that you could go around a course group and say, hi, my name is so-and-so, and I have a perceptual problem. Uh -huh. Everyone goes, hello, and you go to the next one, hi, my name is so-and-so, I have a perceptual problem. Because it takes a lot of reinforcement uh, to continually remind your mind that you have a perceptual problem, instead of a, a, a financial problem, a relationship problem, a health, a health of the body problem, you know, all of the many problems that seem to be in this world that seem very real are really all perceptual problems. And I was sharing last night, first of all, to be seeing a world that doesn't even exist, uh, that's kind of like going into a desert and, and having a mirage or hallucinating. Hallucinations are a problem. But then beyond the hallucinations, when you start to divide the hallucinations up into good hallucinations and bad hallucinations, and indifferent hallucinations, you can see this is where the ego is getting in there. It's very distorted. You know, I like these images, I don't like these images. And images of war, and so on and so forth. Welcome. Come in, Nancy. For a, a real punishment, big punishment. And it's kind of like to mitigate that punishment. No, no let me do it. I'll do it to myself. Uh, just don't do it to me. Please, Mama, please. Do it. And that's kind of what the, the deceived mind is doing with God. It so believes that God is angry, because the ego says that God is mind training. That's course is really no different than what the Bible was saying about, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. It's like purify your altar. Uh, take all the idols and the judgments off your altar, because your altar is extremely powerful. <laughs> so whatever you put on that altar, you're going to get a reflection of, you're going to have an experience of. So it's really like Jeffrey said, negating, it's emptying the altar and saying, I would have only God, only you God, your love there. And then of course that reflects to everything and everyone. It's not like it's God is just a single identity that's separate from all of us. But when we are in love with God, we're in love with everyone. That's why he said, love thy neighbor as thyself, and love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, soul, and mind. So, now dreams is an interesting topic though, because a lot of, when you get into Jungian psychology and a lot of different psychologies, you get into this thing called dream interpretation. And it's maybe no different than going to see your psychic or your astrologer, you know. <laughs> uh, when, you, when you start wanting to specifically figure things out, and I would say, you don't really want to get so much into dream interpretation. But what you do want to get in is, is opening to the Holy Spirit to interpret your dreams. And that's what you're talking about, I think, is let the symbols be used to open your mind and to clarify things and bring healing. And that's why, you know, when people say, well, so-and-so, this was green, and that means envy. You know, dream interpretation can get quite specific as far as colors and, and symbols, what they mean. I would also tell people, pay attention to your feelings while you're dreaming. Tell your mind, hmm, I'm not going to get caught up into the specifics of the dream, but if I'm upset, then there's an interpretation that's going on in my dreams that is not helpful, because I don't want to be upset, I want to be happy and peaceful. So you would apply the same mind training that you do during the so-called daily life day, the activity with your mind at night, and you might just have a little prayer to the Holy Spirit before you go to sleep. Help me be aware of my feelings, and and help me to start to be willing for a mind change. Even when I'm dreaming at night, I can have a mind change. I can see things differently. And you can practice with nighttime dreams as well as daytime dreams. <laughs> and then I would say it can break through both into what I would call lucid dreaming. In psychology, in the last couple decades, we've had this new branch of psychology called lucid dreaming, which is simply being aware that you're dreaming. And that's very empowering, especially when there's a monster that seems to be chasing you, and all of a sudden, you're back in the observer position, going, ha, 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 ha. <laughs> that body's not really me, and that monster, <laughs> it can get the body, but it can't get me, ha, 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 I'm the dreamer. You know, that's kind of an elusive state of being aware that you're dreaming. And that's what A Course in Miracles is aiming at. That's what the real world is. It's simply awareness of dreaming. Because if you're the dreamer, let the dream figures be as vicious as they want. They can't harm you. 
as long as you're in the position of knowing that you're dreaming them. And, and that takes a lot of mind training to start to feel that way, because typically the human experience is you're so identified with the figure, the body, that you're extremely frightened and feel a lot of guilt in relationship to those other bodies. So, gently you come back, uh, Jeffrey's going to be doing a workshop called the Dreamer of the Dream Workshop. So, mm -hmm. you guys can invite him to come down and he'll, he'll take you in step by step. <laughs> Into the mind. It's going to be map of the mind is the first part of the workshop. About you remains as radiant as a star, as pure as light, and as innocent as love itself. Uh, <laughs> thank you. Can you hear that? Yeah, right. Gender was female. Love it in for the women. When you meet anyone. Remember, it is a holy encounter. As you see him, you will see yourself. As you treat him, you will treat yourself. As you think of him, you will think of yourself. Never forget this. For in him, you will find yourself or lose yourself. That was the... Well, of course. <laughs> yeah. When you want only love, you will see nothing else. Heaven is here. There is nowhere else. Heaven is now. There is no other time. Possible that this mission fail. Hmm. What page is that? Text 249 and text 267. So, you read it again. God gave the Holy Spirit to you and gave him the mission to remove all doubt and every trace of guilt that his dear son has laid upon himself. It is impossible that this mission fail. Indeed, <laughs> afford to laugh at fear thoughts, remembering that God goes with you wherever you go. And she really <laughs> <laughs> I'm turned on. <laughs> Thank you for letting us know. <laughs> Actually, I like it very much. <laughs> How lovely is a world whose purpose is forgiveness of God's Son. How free from fear, how filled with blessing and with happiness. How lovely is the world whose purpose is forgiveness of God's Son. How free from fear, how filled with blessing and with happiness. <laughs> Look only at yourself, you cannot find yourself, because that is not what you are. If you look only at yourself, you cannot find yourself, because that is not what you are. Thank you. That's cool. Thank you. The bliss of seeing love in everyone. I'll help you every glimpse. Here, Mary. Now my eyes are yours. Thank you. You're welcome.